you know, how God even connects us. You know, here this Georgia boy meets this Texas boy, you know, of all places at the Jaffa Gate in Jerusalem, right? Um, and from there, things start to happen. Hearts start to be heard as we go beyond what's, you know, our insecurities and straight to the place of what the Father has been saying over both of us. And then we start to talk and dream and start to strategize on what the Father has in His life, what the Father has in my life. What is the call on your life, um, Kurt? What's the call on your life, Jason? And then from there, things start to happen. And then connections begin. Then heart connections begin. Then all of a sudden, prophetic utterances begin over each other. And the next thing you know, those prophetic utterances just stop just being utterances, but they're actually prophetic timelines that are now lived out. That's the kingdom. That is how it works within the kingdom. And I want to talk about a little bit about that is what is your call? Do you know your call? Um, you know, we were just talking last night. I mean, even some of the things that they're doing that they fully can't get into sometimes just for safety purposes, but there's a new approach. We find ourselves, just like Ava was talking about, we find ourselves in a time in history that we have never, ever walked in before in the sense of you don't know what you don't know. You're going to need God in every single moment of your journey. Amen? You know, um, I don't even know fully where he wants to take us. This morning we woke up to a, to a puppy that is probably dying, so Mandy's not here, you know. Um, and I'm always like, something's always going on when the Lord's doing something. Kind of like the earthquake even, you know. It's like those people, I mean, how many were there, we think? Oh, maybe 60,000? Maybe more than 60,000 died? One day, they still haven't gone into certain places and found, they still haven't even been able to excavate some rubble. I mean, that's how much devastation we're talking about. It's been months, and they still have not been able to get to all the places that have been destroyed. I want to go into Acts chapter 9. If you have your Bible, you can turn with me there. And I just want to go into some things, and then I, I want to see if the Lord wants to connect some dots for us this morning. Amen? Can we go there? Okay. So it says in verse 1, it says, Meanwhile, Saul, still drawing his breath hard from threatening and murderous desire against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest, and he requested of him letters to the synagogues at Damascus, authorizing him so that if he found any man or any men or any women belonging to the way, I love that, of life as determined by faith in Jesus Christ, he might bring them bound with chains to Jerusalem. Now, as he traveled on, he came near to Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, and he fell to the ground. Then he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you harassing me, troubling me, molesting me? And Saul said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is dangerous, and it will turn out badly for you to keep kicking against the gourd, to uh, offer vain and perilous resistance. Trembling and astonished, he asked, Lord, what do you desire me to do? Let me just stop right there. If I look at the name Saul in the Hebrew, it means to be desired, prayed for. You see, if you don't understand that God desires to walk with you, you will never understand the call that is on your life for the journey with you and the Father as, as son and dad and as daughter and dad. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, it was the fear of the Lord that awoken me to the call in my life. 
It was in a place where all of a sudden I was blinded. I thought I knew where I was going. I thought I had the religious walk. I thought I had the religious talk, and I did. But I didn't have the indue power of Holy Spirit moving actively within me to hear and see what Father wants me to see. And in doing so, I went into some very dark places to finally I saw myself, where and what am I? Who am I? And when he fell to the ground, that was when I started to see the call over my life. It was not in my good times, right, like you were talking about. It's in the fall of my life that I go, wait a second. You're getting my attention for something right now. You're shaking something up like the earthquake within me right now. And, but religiously, we don't ever want to talk about that. A sister of mine just last Sunday, we were talking about, she said, you know, thank you for not trying to get me out of this time of mourning because I needed to mourn with the Father. But a lot of times, what do we do? If somebody's mourning and we don't like it because it stirs something in us, come on, wake up, get up, you're okay. He says, mourn with those who mourn, weep with those who weep, celebrate with those who need to be celebrated with. Amen? Amen. So it's interesting, it says, then he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It says this, and Saul said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus. Now, this is the one. Now, Saul has been putting people who believe in Jesus to death in chains. He said, I am Jesus who you're persecuting. It is dangerous, and it will turn out badly for you. Verse 7 says this, the men who were accompanying him were unable to speak out of terror. Let me tell you right now, when the Lord comes to you in this way, you can't speak. You can do nothing but listen. Amen? Hearing the voice but seeing no one, then Saul got up from the ground, but though his eyes were open, he could not see anything. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was unable to see for three days, and he neither ate or drank anything. Now there in Damascus, a disciple named Ananias, the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he, said, he answered, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight. Don't you love that? And ask at the house of Judas for a a man of Tarsus named Saul, and behold, he is praying there. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias enter and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. Now, interesting, Ananias in the Hebrew means whom Jehovah has graciously given. And Ananias answered, Lord, have I have heard many people tell about this man, especially how much evil and what great suffering he has brought on your saints at Jerusalem. Now he is here in his authority from the high priest to put in chains all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the descendants of Israel." For I will make it clear to him how much he will be afflicted and much endure the suffering in my namesake. So Ananias left and went into the house. And he, said, and, and he laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you along the way by which you have come here, has sent me that you may recover your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he recovered his sight, and they arose, and he was baptized. Now, let me just ask you a question. Have you had your Ananias come to you? You know, what's interesting is Paul, after he regained his sight, after the scales came off, it wasn't, uh, why don't you give me a month or two or maybe a year and let me find out what I need to do. It was instantaneous. 
instantaneous he started to speak of who? Jesus. It was instantaneous that all of a sudden it started stirring him. What he once was doing to, to persecute, now he's doing to set free. He knows his call. My anointing that God has given me is to work with leaders around the world to say, why aren't you walking in your call? That's my call. So what do I do? I walk around with leaders asking them, why aren't they walking in their call? And if I don't do that, if I don't challenge that place, guess what happens? You need to understand that you are desired by God to walk on a journey with God, to walk it out with Him. What is the call? Is the call video games? Okay, it might be for the Lord. Hallelujah, glory to be to God. But it's not about what you do, it's about who you are. It's about what God's given you. It's what God's saying unto you. It is the journey aspect that we've got to understand and see. And you know what? Maybe you need to have some scales peeled off your eyes today. Maybe you need to come out of the darkness, out of the blind place to see today like I did. I'll never forget it. My life, finally, here I am, worked my butt off. Give everything to my family, and they, all you know now is now I am up in my daughter's room wondering if I'm going to be divorced or not after walking out of the extramarital affair for months. And it wasn't until then that the father entered that room with me ready to kill it all myself, be done with myself. Is this really what you called me to? This life, Lord? And as he entered into that place, as he touched me, right? All of a sudden, I had brothers that I hadn't talked to in a while call me out of the blue. You know what, Jason? I had a dream about you last night that you were thinking about doing yourself in. I had a dream last night, Jason, that you were ready to call it off. Brother after brother after brother that hears from the Lord. You see, because the Lord who desired me, who prayed for me, just like Saul, also sent men to me whom Jehovah, Jehovah has graciously given. God gave to me in my darkest hour. And out of my darkest hour came the greatest light of the call on my life. What? Are you kidding me? It didn't come from when you were on the mountaintop experience. It didn't come when you had every scripture memorized. It didn't come when you had actually laid hands on 50,000 people. It didn't come on all these things when you had given over 1,000 sermons. No, it came in the, the darkest area of my life, when everything was black around me, he engulfed me, touched me, and took the scales from my eyes and showed me the purpose that he had for him and I. For I will make clear to him listen to this. And instantly the scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he recovered his sight. Then he rose and was baptized. Now listen to verse 19 and 20. It's amazing. And after he took some food and he was strengthened for several days afterward, he remained with the disciples at Damascus. Verse 20 says this, And immediately in the synagogues he proclaimed Jesus. Now, don't you know, he was just getting letters, the okay, just a few days before to take these people down. Now, he's proclaiming the one that he was looking to put you in chains for. Immediately, 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 immediately is the call on your life. Immediately. Not five years from now. Not 
10 years from now, not a month from now. It is immediately for you to walk in. How many of you are tired of sitting and you know what the call is and you've actually had the the scales taken from your eyes, but you're still sitting for some reason. You're still in your place of victimhood. You're still in your place of you don't know why. There is a place that you're sitting and I'm telling you, we are now in a season. It is not for sitting. It is a season for walking out your call, your destiny, your walk and journey with the Father. That is what this dying generation is looking for. If you're sitting, they're sitting. If you're on call, they're wondering, what's wrong with me? We talked about this on Friday. There are no what ifs for believers. There are no ifs for believers. Well, if I give this, or if I do that, or if this happens this, what? Stop. What is he saying? Have you had your Damascus Road experience? I know mine, it wasn't easy. It liked to kill me, scared me to death, put me on my knees, never never knew I could cry that much. But afterwards, it gave me what I needed. When the scales came off, all of a sudden I could see, wherever you're going to send me, things are going to happen. I don't care what the persecution, I don't care what area I go into, if you're calling me in there, I trust you're going before me, and I know that I am on call with you, and we're going to the exact place that you need, right? What if all of us walked in our call that way? What would be happening right now? if all of us called, walked in that way. Verse 21, it says, All who heard him were amazed and said, Is not the very man who harassed and overthrew and destroyed in Jerusalem those who called upon this name? And he has come here for the express purpose of arresting them and bringing them to the ch- in chains before the chief priest. The saw increased all the more in strength and continued to confound and put to confusion the Jews who lived in Damascus by comparing and examining evidence and proving that Jesus is the Messiah. You know, we look at your lives, Kurt and Ava, and what you, God, has called you to Turkey. And sometimes we put the measurement of that like, okay, then do I have to go somewhere? Is that my call, that I need to go to some foreign place, right? My call is to whoever God has given me in front of me today. That might be my wife, that might be a friend, a brother, a sister, a stranger, and it might be those in a persecuted land. May even be governments, but here's what I found. If you receive the call and you ask the Lord to walk with you and you walk with him, I'm telling you right now, you will actually sell yourself short in your call if you don't get one-on-one with the Father. Ask Him to take the scales off because what you're doing is, and what I did was, I looked too small. Because here's what I found out. We were just talking about this last night. What is it that the Father has fully for my call? If I've seen that vision, but I put my human intellect on it or my human reasoning on it or my human whatever it might, I am going to fall short. So whatever I put in today is going to be my outcome for tomorrow. What does that mean? What has you seen and how big is it and how great is it and how much is it of God to do versus you to do? What do I mean by that? What is the call? You have to have the scales come off to see the full vision right? Of whatever that might be, guess what? 
Start with your marriage. Start with a friendship. Start with a brother. Start with a sister. Start with just getting into that place with somebody and asking them, what's the call in your life? I don't know mine yet. I'm asking. I'm believing. I'm seeking. I'm wondering. Does this make sense today? Okay. Are you sure? All right. I want to go to Acts 13, and then I'm going to close this up here in just a minute. Starting in verse 2, and it says, While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit separated now for, the Holy Spirit said, Separate now for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Have you ever been that guy that, or girl that you walk in and say, somebody will do it. Somebody will get that done. Until one day said the Lord, I would say that with others, and even would it be with ministry or work. He said, why don't you do it? Why don't you step in and do it? Why are you letting everybody else in that place and then you complain? Why are you the Monday morning quarterback? Why don't you get in there and see what it's like to be on the field? Why don't you get in there and see what it's like to get tackled? Why don't you get in there and see what it's like to get your head ripped off? Why don't you stop sitting back and looking, and why don't you get involved? Why don't you see what they deal with, what they pray for, what they have to deal with? This is the call. And then all of a sudden, when you get in there, your grace level and meter goes way up. Why? Because you realize you want that grace over you when you walk it out. Amen? But this is what's so good. It says, and then after praying, after fasting and praying, they put their hands on them and sent them away. So then being sent out by Holy Spirit, they went down. And they sailed away to Cyprus. And so let me tell you right now, what are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? Is it the start? Okay. What does that look like? Is it the end of things? Well, you know what, Pastor, you know, my, my, I can't really dig too much into my retirement right now. Okay. Might be the case. Or you know what? I just really don't have any money to do this, that, and the other. I really don't know what I need to do. I'm going to tell you right now. This season that you find ourselves in, in this country, in this region, I'm telling you, the body of Christ is needing to see the sons and daughters walk in their call. And that is what most people leave this church about is because you come in here, we have given, we have given, all of us have given, us included in the church, have given a perpetual lie unto you and told you, I will do your faith for you. That is a lie. I can only do my call. You can't come in here and lean on my faith. And I can't come in here and lean on your faith. You have to walk your faith out because that is the place that I believe on the judgment day is not so much about what we talked about the other day and even what Bevere might say. It's not about what your sin. You see, the blood of Christ covers your sin. I believe the judgment seat of Christ will be, did you not want to walk and journey with me on the call that I bled for and died for with you and I? That's where the tears will be. And he'll show you that day. I believe this is what I had for you and I. But what got in the way? What fear got in the way? What anger got in the way? What feelings got in the way? What judgment got in the way? What got in the way? Are you kidding me? That that person can have more power over the living God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords that has called you, breathed life on you. That little situation is greater than the Lord. Am I wrong?
my heart breaks. <clears throat> but at the same time, I'm excited, like you were saying, Ava. There is an earthquake going on within all of us in the body of Christ right now. It's toppling down things that need to topple down. It's killing things that need to be killed. Don't get me wrong. We don't want anybody to die. But within us, we need some of those things to die, do we not? He wants to build back. He wants to take the scales off. Hallelujah. So, do you feel desired? Do you feel desired? Let me ask you this. Do you feel desired? If you don't, that's okay. But he desires you. If there's breath in your lungs, he desires you. Because he created you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If he desires you, just like Saul, and he prays for you, then there's something he's about to give unto you. And what he's about to give unto you is an Ananias. Only if you believe in certain areas that you can't see. If you believe you can see, you don't need Ananias. What do I mean by that? Some of us do have our eyes open, but we can't see. You ever been there? Are you there now in certain areas? I am. I'm praying for some skills to come off in certain areas of my life right now. But if he desires me and he prays for me, then guess what? He's going to graciously give unto me. What is he going to give unto me? The call. The journey. The relationship. I'm going to have the uh, worship team come up. The first place that he dealt with me where the scales were on my eyes was with my family. I had to go back to my children and say, forgive me. Forgive me for not loving you well. Forgive me for, for leading this family by fear because I didn't want anything to happen. I didn't trust God with you. Forgive me of that. Then I had to trust that the Father and that would deal with them. It's a really good friend of mine. <clears throat> Her story is so horrific, I don't know how she loves Jesus. But the father would allow many, 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 many men to rape her. When she was a little girl. She is the most genuine, loving woman of God I've ever met. She went to hell and back trying to deal with these things. But you know what? She's on call. She's on call. Working with women that have gone through this.
that weak place can be your strength with the Lord. Or that weak place can be your anger with them. Caught up, locked up. I believe if you're here, it's because God has something for you. How many of you know it's more than what you're seeing today? Raise your hand. Praise God. Kurt, Ava, I'm going to have you come up. Kurt and Ava pray over you today. Whatever that, in our minds, whatever that, that, that call we think is big or great, don't put measurements in there. It starts little. Don't despise the little things, amen? Now this friend of mine, you would never know about her ministry. It's not on a billboard. It's not on stage. It's literally every day some house somewhere, some coffee shop somewhere. And I'm going to tell you right now, I know when she gets with women, it is the love of the Father that comes in. And nobody knows but God. But I'm telling you right now, when she sits with those women and they get free, and she loves them, and they walk out of there with no longer being a victim, but a daughter of the Most High God, it is that testimony, it is that call that she could have said, you know what, screw man. Forget it. What I have had happen to me no more. But she didn't. She said, Father, come and heal me. Father, come and set me free. Father, come. I want to know who you are. I don't want to live like this anymore. I know this is not who I am, but I need to know who I am through you, Father. And then she told me, she said, you know, Jason, every time I sit with a woman that's gone through something similar to me, she goes, I get another kiss and touch from Daddy like I've never been before. Why would I not want to sit with them? Why would I not want to hear from them? Why would I not want to actually agree and walk with them? Because every time I hear their story, every time we pray together, he meets us right there. I love my journey with Father. Oh, we are missing out on so many things. If we allow the things that have happened in our lives to take away from the precious gift that the call on the journey is with Daddy, with his Abba. What is that passion? What will sustain you to the end is not your goodness. You don't have it. It is his love. I heard Stephanie Gritzinger say this just recently. She said, you know, you can bless God. You can really bless God, but you can never impress him. lives aren't to impress the Lord. Our lives is to walk with Him. That's all I need. I just need to be with Dad. And if Dad is talking to Kurt and Ava in Turkey, I want to be where Dad is. If Dad is sitting with my son or my daughter and talking through things that the past word to her, then that's where I am. If it's at coffee or if it's at a conference room or if it's at a skate park, that's where I want to be. 
Here's the lie. The lie that has been perpetrated throughout the church is that it's only for a select few that take this stage. No. No, when Paul talked about all those churches in, in Asia Minor, in Turkey, he would come in and say, you guys are doing amazing. What does that mean? He ain't doing it. Now he would say, okay, in this place, you got a little off, we got to talk about this. But he would encourage. Are we encouraging each other? Are we asking each other? Are we iron that sharpens iron? Are we the coals that come together? What's the Lord called in you? What is you walking out in the call that the Father's given you? How can I be praying and agreeing with you? Tell me about your call. I want to know about your call. I want to know what he's telling you. How are you walking with him? Tell me, what is he going to do with you? Hey, did you hear from him today? Because I did. How can I be praying? How can we be agreeing? How do, what's the healing that needs to happen in order for that to move? Come on, guys. You see, there's an anointing that these two carry. And it's a risky anointing. <laughs> How many people you know risk out to go to a place that don't really like Christians? And not only just go, but they take their entire family, their small kids. But you know what? That risk can be just as risky as forgiving somebody. As loving somebody. The Refuge is located at 130 Gulf Freeway North in League City, Texas. Come join us Sundays at 1030 a.m. We value his presence and we value his people. Find out more at www.therefuge.live.com.